Wound assessment in patients with spinal cord injuries. Wounds and pressure ulcers are frequently seen in people with spinal cord injury. The reduced activity and prolonged bed rest that accompany spinal cord injury can significantly affect health and quality of life and can lead to the development of pressure ulcers. When left untreated or poorly managed, serious health complications can occur. Effective prevention and management of pressure requires expertise in both wound care and spinal cord injury. It is important to accurately and consistently assess a wound to evaluate a person's response to treatment interventions. This video will review essential elements of a complete wound assessment. These include an examination of wound size, edge, wound bed, exudate, wound odor, peri-wound skin, and pain. The time needed to complete a full wound assessment will vary depending on the patient and the complexity of the wounds. Each wound requires its own assessment. The time required for the evaluation will also include removal of the dressing, cleansing of the wound, and reapplication of the appropriate dressing. Clean or aseptic technique is the routine standard of practice for inspection and dressing of most wounds, unless otherwise indicated by a clinical wound care specialist. It is important to use clean instruments, supplies, and technique to avoid further contamination of a non-sterile wound. A dressing tray and the assessment environment should be prepared in advance according to each client's needs. This will include a disposable measuring ruler and a sterile cotton-tipped applicator or probe, and gloves. You should also include all materials required for proper redressing after the assessment. The wound size is measured by length, width, and depth in centimeters. A consistent measuring approach is important to accurately monitor wound size over time. Any changes in wound size will reflect healing or deterioration of the tissue. The longest part of the wound is the length, regardless of the direction. Width is the widest aspect of the wound that is 90 degrees to the length. Depth is the maximum depth assessed in the entire wound bed. Once the length, width, and depth have been measured, it is important to determine if any undermining or sinus tracts are present. Undermining is destruction of tissue that occurs beneath the intact skin of the wound perimeter. A sinus tract is a tunnel that extends from any part of the wound and tracks into deeper tissue. To describe undermining or sinus tracts, an imaginary clock face is visualized over the wound bed with 12 o'clock at the head of the patient and 6 o'clock at the patient's feet. Undermining is assessed by performing a sweeping motion with the probe around the perimeter of the wound. If undermining exists, it should be described using the clock for direction. For example, from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. The depth of undermining should be measured with the probe and the maximum depth recorded. A sinus track is measured at a specific location and reported by using the imaginary clock face. Use the probe to determine the depth of the tunnel. Numerous parameters should be recorded to describe the wound in an objective manner. Note that terminology may vary in different locations and practice settings, but the principles are the same. Consistent use of terminology improves communication among clinical practitioners. The wound bed should be examined and characteristics of the tissue described. Record if the tissue is healthy or dead. Underlying structures such as tendon or bone and any foreign bodies visible should be recorded. The edge of the wound should also be described as it can indicate the stage of healing. Pressure wounds can be described as having diffuse, demarcated, epithelializing, attached, non-attached, rolled, calloused, or scarred edges. Exudate or drainage is assessed for type and amount. Fluid may be serous or clear, sanguinous, bloody, or purulent, opaque, yellow, or tan in color. The amount of fluid is described as none if it's dry, scant if moist but no drainage, 
minimal, moderate, or large. The odor should be described following cleansing. If present, it may indicate infection. Hairy wound skin is the intact skin surrounding the wound. It needs to be assessed looking for features such as color, edema, firmness, texture, and moisture. Ideally, the wound skin is intact and healthy. If it is red or swollen, it may be inflamed or infected. A full wound assessment does not have to be performed at every dressing change, but should be done weekly or if there is deterioration in the wound condition. If there is deterioration, the team will need to discuss the treatment plan and make adjustments as indicated. Frequency of dressing changes will vary depending on the client's needs and the exudate amount. To effectively develop a complete wound care plan, a number of factors should be considered. Microclimate, in the context of wounds, refers to skin temperature and moisture and may include air movement in the area between the patient's skin and support surfaces. Microclimate management is always part of an effective wound care plan. Review current prevention strategies, pressure redistribution, posture, repositioning schedules, and skin checks. Assess all support surfaces, lifts, and transfers. Also consider recent changes in physical or mental status and review the client's nutrition. You should also consider asking about pain. A change in pain can be an indicator of trauma, inflammation, swelling, pressure, or infection. In patients with spinal cord injuries, pain may also present as spasticity or autonomic dysreflexia. Consult the client if they have increased sweating or their limbs are twitching or jumping more than usual. For more information, please see the Canadian Best Practice Guidelines for the Prevention and Management of Pressure Ulcers in People with Spinal Cord Injury, available at www onf.org. Consult the Wound Assessment Parameters and Definitions Resource Sheet and the Wound Assessment and Treatment Flow Sheet, developed by the BC Provincial Nursing Skin and Wound Care Committee. These are available on skyerproject.com.